to lift your voice even unto the Lord. There is none like him. There is none to whom we may liken him so that you be compared. magnify you even this day. Shall we even continue to pray and ask God to cleanse and wash us from every unrighteousness? That God will fill us with the Holy Spirit. Without the Spirit of God, we can do nothing. We need Him. We need Him even at this time. So pray, pray that God will cleanse you. Pray that God will wash you. Pray that God will make you whole. the Spirit of God will feel you.
I read some word of scripture from Galatians chapter 3. I'll start from the verse 26. And I'll continue through to chapter 4 verse 1. Galatians 3, 26 through to chapter 4, verse 1. You are all the sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. Now the chapter 4 verse 1 says it. What I'm saying is that as long as the heir is a child, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. Amen. Now, according to scripture, anyone who is heir, or what we know is that if you say somebody is, an, is a heir, or somebody is supposed to inherit a property, then it means that by law that person owns it. It is that person's property. But Galatians 4 verse 1 talks about a certain situation where you have somebody who is, who is expected to own a property but that person is a child. If you have a situation like that, supposing you have a two-year-old, you have a three-year-old, and that three-year-old is supposed to own an estate, that person is supposed to own a certain property, because that person is not of age, that person has not gotten to that position where he could control or understand and then use this property or take ownership of this property, even though the property belongs to that person, that person is unable to take hold of it. However, what you have is that there are people who hold that property in trust until this child is of age. So it means that until that child gets to that position, until that child becomes of age, even though he owns a property, he cannot never get to the point of using it. And this is my little dilemma this evening. That although God has given us everything, there is no room to contain it. Although God has given us all the estate, although God has given us all the property, Although we are hers according to promise. Because the Bible says that as long as we are put on Christ, we belong also, we, we are Abraham's seed. If we belong to Christ, it means that we are Abraham's seed. And because we are Abraham's seed, we are hers according to promise. It means that whatever God promised Abraham is ours. We are supposed to take hold of the property. We are supposed to move in the promises that God has given. But because we have not gone to that state, we have not gone to that stage, because we have not reached the age of maturity, the things are there, but we cannot handle them. The car is there for you, but because you are two years old, nobody will entrust you with that Rolls Royce. Nobody went and, and trust you with that high order or high end vehicle. Nobody will entrust you with that company. 
Nobody will entrust you without land because you are only a two year old. And that is the challenge of the church today. Our church is full of too many babies. And if I talk about a church, I'm not talking about any particular church, but I'm talking about the church in entirety as we walk in this land. And I believe this current pandemic sort of it is a sort of a wake up call to us. That look, we cannot continue to play church the way we are playing and expect to inherit the promises that God has given to us. We cannot continue to be babies. We cannot continue to be the same way we were yesterday. Nothing changed. We cannot continue to live as infants. Tossed to and fro by any wave of doctrine. And expect to have the promises of God. Expect to walk in the promises of God. Expect whatever God did uh, to, uh, through the apostles of old. We expect the same to happen in our case. I want to draw your attention to one thing. When the day of Pentecost came and there was the outpour of the Holy Spirit, there were many, many, many towns. But I went to one particular town. In that town, there were many, many houses. But the Spirit of God descended only in one house. There were so many people gathered in that place. But the Spirit of God descended on a particular group of people. I believe this group of people have money to move into that state. This group of people had matured to a point that they were able to wield or they were able to use or they were able to inherit the promises that God had prepared for them. God always tells us that he would wish to prepare a table before us. The Bible says that. He says that, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, I'll come in and dine with him and he with me. If you are going to dine with the Lord, then it means that the Lord is setting the table before you. Even though the Lord is willing to set the table before us, we have not gotten to the point where we could sit with him. Bible says that we should desire the pure spiritual milk so that we will grow thereby. So as we grow and we grow into maturity, God then brings us to the point where we are able to appropriate these promises. Sadly, we continue to be moving in circles and we continue to be playing church and because we continue to play church we never get to worship God the way he expects us to and because we never get to worshiping God the way he expects us to the promises have also eluded us I just want to encourage us I just want to invite us this evening to begin to look into ourselves and begin to empty ourselves. If you read Peter's letter to the church, he said that, 1 Peter 2 and verse 2, he says that, first, the first verse says that we should put aside all sin, all kinds of weights, all kinds of things. The things that do not benefit us as a people. And then desire the pure spiritual milk. So I want to invite you as an individual so that you come into the presence of God and at this time desire that pure spiritual milk. Ask God to put in you that desire to put away those weights, those things, those things that do not honor God. And even as you do so, you ask God to put in you that desire. Bible says that in 1 Peter 2 verse 1, it says that, therefore rid yourselves of all malice and of all deceit, deceit, 
hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Let us put all these aside. And then like newborn babes, let us desire the pure spiritual milk. I want you to, I want to invite you to join me to come into the presence of God. I believe what God is searching for is room. God is searching for room so that he could operate. He's searching for room so that his spirit could occupy. He's searching for a place where he could put the life. He could put the life of the spirit there. Sadly, we have not created that room. But I'm sure if we are able to take away malice, we are able to take away deceit, we are able to take away hypocrisy, the room will be created. And God will put in us that desire for his word. So that even as we listen to his word, even as we desire his word, even as we feed on his word, we will grow. We will grow. We will no longer be infants. And we will be able to take hold of our possessions. Join me even as we pray. Look into your life as an individual. Are you really for God? Are you really for real? Or you are putting up a face? This is the moment of truth. This is a reality check. Are we real? Are we real? Are we real? If we are real, room will be created for the Spirit of God. Room will be room will be created even for the zeal of God. Room will be created even for the desire for God's word. And the passion for his souls. The passion for his kingdom. Are we for real? Revelation says that we, we, we claim we are rich. But we are poor. We claim we are clothed. But we are naked. Before God. What man of man are you? Where is the room? Where is the room for God's spirit? Where is the room for God's spirit to come? Where is the room for the revival? Where is the room in your life? In my life? For God's festation. And if anybody would hear God even at this moment and open his heart to him. Somebody is here. If anybody would want to, to put away that hypocrisy. If anybody would want to put away that emptiness. If anybody would want to put away that vanity. If anybody would want to put away that sin. He would just enter the space. And that person would be transformed into another man. That person will create the enabling environment. That person will create the room for God's presence. And God will descend in power into that person's life. You will never be the same. Just try this. Just open up to him. God will put in you that desire. That desire for his word. That passion for souls. God will bring about that transformation. He will take a ten center stage in your life. You will indeed dine with him. And everybody who knows you will know that of a truth there is a change in this house. Salvation has come to this house. Salvation can come to your house. Salvation can visit you even at this moment wherever you find yourself. There are so many things we do in the presence of God. And God will want no more. Because our hands are sold. Our hearts are sold. Our minds have become corrupt. But He's willing. He's willing. He's willing. He's willing to help us. And he's in our space now. So shall we pray for each and every member of our church? For that brother, that sister that you know. After praying for yourself, I want you to pray for that brother as well. That he would be enabled to remove and create room. 
I said when the day of Pentecost came, it didn't, go, it didn't happen. The Spirit of God did not descend on everybody. He descended on those who were prepared. He descended on those who had created room. Those who had created a enabling environment. He came to those particular people. And the effect was that those who were around them realized that something indeed has taken place in their lives. If the people around you are not prepared, but you have prepared yourself, God will visit you. And what God will do in your life, the others around you will see. And you'll be able to disciple them as well. Just open up. Open up. Open up. Open up and create room for the master. Create room so that God will put in you that desire. That desire for his word. That desire. That desire. Even, even to please him. That desire to go after him. That desire to worship him in spirit and in truth. That desire for his word. May you go hungry for the word. May your heart pants for the Lord. May your soul long after the Lord like the deer panted for water. May God put in you that desire. And even as you seek Him, may the Spirit of the Most High God fill you. May the power of the Most High overshadow you. May you be transformed into another man. Pray. Let's pray for Christians all over the nations, even in our church, all over the nations, that, that we would have that desire. We'll empty ourselves, we'll rid ourselves of all hypocrisy, we'll rid ourselves of all, all, all hypocrisy, all malice, all sin. Be grateful, grateful for the Spirit of God. And even our Spirit of God. After the Lord, to long after the Lord, to desire the Lord, to seek the Lord, to seek His word, to read His word, to do His word, to do His will. May we be able to create room for the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And may healing flow. Amen. May healing flow. Amen. If there's anybody in a sick bed, may healing flow to you. Amen. May the Lord touch you. May the Lord heal you. Because He heals all our diseases. loved us and washed us from our sins. Unto you be glory now and forevermore. And all the saints will say Amen. 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 Shall we all share the grace together? The grace so of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ the, the love, love of God, God the and the fellowship, fellowship of the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. Peace.